Hi everyone, it's Jackie McIntyre here. For those of you that don't know me, I'm an integrated healthcare therapist, coach and mentor. And today, I actually want to talk about something that's been coming up a lot lately, but it's something I've been giving considerable thought to for the past few years. I'm wondering how uncomfortable does it have to get before you take action? How uncomfortable do things have to get before you take action. Now, many, many years ago, many years ago, I actually would put up with a lot before I actually did anything. And it brought me so much stress, so much crisis, so much chaos, so much conflict with myself that I really worked hard at changing it. But it's about a deeply ingrained pattern that many, many people have of waiting until it gets so uncomfortable, things get so uncomfortable that they can't stand it and they're forced to take action. But only then, only when it gets really uncomfortable and not before. So, and that not only that, but we don't, pract we don't take practical action at the first sign of something not being okay. Whether it be some, one of our values or boundaries have been challenged, but we are mostly conditioned from childhood to ignore it, whatever it is. We're just conditioned to ignore it unless it gets really, really bad. Unless it kind of invades our space, our privacy. It pushes right up in us and makes us uncomfortable. Unless it's life-threatening, unless it's threatened to your freedoms, your safety, your health, your idea of what, what life should look like, unless it gets really, really uncomfortable. But when you're a child and nearly everyone experiences this. So it's a real unraveling process that we go through in adulthood to remember how we're meant to function in a healthy way, the kinds of relationships that we can have and how especially we can do this so much better. When we're a child, we are subconsciously conditioned to ignore what is happening. Um, that if it's something that you don't like, if it breaches one of your personal boundaries and quite often as a child, you don't even understand the concepts of boundaries or values. But if it's just something that you don't like what's happening, generally you're conditioned to ignore that. And you're encouraged, furthermore, to just move on to something else. And a few examples of that would be, and I, and I wonder as I talk about this, if you're even remembering some of the experiences that you had as a kid, or maybe you saw a friend going through it as well. Uh, one of the things that comes to mind, and this comes from a client's story, all of the examples I'm going to give you are from client stories. Let's just say you're at primary school and somebody else, another kid, spits their lunch on you, they spit their food on you. And you do as you're told to do. You go to the teacher and you ask the teacher for support. You ask them for guidance. You ask them to step in and do something. And that teacher might actually, their way of dealing it is the way that they then tell you how to deal with it. And it goes back to this just ignore it concept. So maybe the teacher would say to you, uh, maybe you should go sit over there so that you're away from them and they can't do that to you anymore. The teacher thinks that it's problem solved and it just tells you, just go move away from whatever it was that made you uncomfortable and then you can forget about it and you can just get on with it, right? So there, there are literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different situations and experiences that I could give examples of alone that come from schooling that condition us to not take any notice um, of the things that really bother us, to not take any action and to find ways to avoid it and not deal with it. So, you know, kind of just put the blinkers on, right? 
So it teaches you not to deal with the issue. So it's not completed, it's not done, it's not resolved and you don't feel good about that when it's not completed and when you haven't taken action. Or let's go prior to school, you might have been forced to do something that went against what you felt that you really didn't want to do. So it could have been something as simple as eating food that made you vomit or made you gag, right? Or you might have been forced to hug somebody or kiss somebody that actually made you feel really uncomfortable and you might not even even have really known that person. Um, you might have had a smaller kid hit you, right? And I'm sure there'll be other memories that come up for you. But being a kid in those situations and at that age, if you don't stand up to that, you, you actually don't often get the chance to stand up to that because if you do, you're threatened with punishment, with being yelled at, with being criticised, with being told off, with being hit in some cases and the list goes on and on. So you learn at a very young age to just go with the flow, don't make waves. Don't stand up for yourself, you'll only get into trouble. But that actually threatens your safety because it ingrains in you these subconscious things that become patterns. They become patterns for how you deal with life, deal with conflict, deal with things that go against your values, right? So it teaches you to just put up with it don't worry about it, get on with things, you know, look ahead, don't look at that, that kind of all comes up. Fast forward, you're now an adult and uh, I'll give you this example. You receive a letter in the mail, this is another client of mine probably in the last few weeks, saying that, and it's not word for word, I'm not giving you, it's only partially true, partially not true yet. Uh, so you're an adult, you receive a letter in the mail saying that you'll now be required to submit yourself for health testing if you live at a house on your street with prime numbers. So it might be 12, 14, 16, 18, things like that. It totally, everything in that letter, everything about what it's asking you to do, what it's asking the people to do, what it's demanding of you totally goes against your personal, your medical beliefs and your freedoms, but you're relieved that you won't have to do anything about it at all because you live in a house that has an odd number, your number 11. So you get to ignore it. You don't have to do anything about it. It's like, phew, that doesn't really affect me. So even though I don't agree with it, I'm not going to do anything about it because just it doesn't affect me, right? So it, it hasn't, it's placed a bit of pressure on you, it's placed a bit of uncomfortable on you, but not so much that it now pushes your buttons and you're forced to take action. And here's another one. You make an agreement with somebody uh, for something to happen in a certain way. It might be a personal agreement, a work one, a business one, and a few days later into that agreement, the person that you're involved with starts doing something that is really against the agreement that you had together. You might not do anything about it, just choosing to ignore it. So that really old, um, you know, just ignore it, get on with it kind of subconscious programming comes up. You might tell yourself that it's just not a big deal in the, in the scheme of things, so you're going to forget about it and move on. Again, a good way to avoid things. You might promise yourself that you're not going to do this with this person ever again. So again, you're not actually dealing with it, but you're just like, I'm going to put up with it, but I'm never going to do this again, right? You might actually say to somebody else how unhappy you are with that person for not sticking to the agreement. 
but you'll talk to somebody else about it instead the person that it actually involves again just is another subconscious programming that says don't actually deal with it let's avoid it but we're going to avoid it in this way either way none of it is directly taking action at the time that it happens and with the person or the thing involved okay and the last example that I'm going to give you because I want to give you a few just so you can kind of jump backwards and forwards throughout the timeline of your life and maybe look and see where some of yours has come from from your own um, experiences in life uh, this is another one that I saw recently a man just went to his regular podiatrist appointment he always in the past in the past goes there no problems and he pays cash because he doesn't have a credit card he's very old school when he went to this appointment he was refused payment by cash they don't do that anymore he was asked to take also he was asked to take his temperature by the administration person behind the desk they said that he could have his appointment and um, they'll figure out payment at a later date but then when they said that they wanted to take his temperature he declined because he'd been asked if he had any viral symptoms and he said no he was healthy he was then asked if he would submit to having his temperature taken and he said he didn't want to do that that was his boundary and it actually went against things that he holds valuable to him so because of that he was refused his appointment he summed it up in the moment he reflected in the moment and he chose to leave the appointment and he wondered whether he should have just put up with it he said it's not that big of a deal right and when I had to talk to him about the reason why he did what he did like the responses that he gave to the questions it's because it was very important to him it did matter to him it did align with his boundaries and with his values and it did it was a big deal to him so then he realized I did make the right call I did make the right decision not keeping that appointment for him right but he was he was nearly reverting back to the old subconscious programming I should have just probably put up with it it's not a big deal right so it was uncomfortable enough for him right at that moment that he stuck to his guns and left but as he left and it still really is not resolved right he's just declining the appointment because they're declining him entry without him agreeing to be submitted to a temperature test by an administration person so it's still not getting resolved in the big scheme of things there's no discussions coming from that the um, therapist involved doesn't understand um, his standpoint and why he's doing that so in one way it's kind of getting dealt with like he's he's doing what's right for him in that moment but in the same respect leaving and not completing it is another piece that needs to happen there if we're truly going to do it in the way that this is intended to be done right so he had real wins in in that experience for him but there are millions of experiences that people have every single day that are really uncomfortable because it's an experience that goes against what they hold dear and true to them and a vast majority of those people will actually find the easiest way through the uncomfortable part of that experience not dealing with it if it doesn't affect them too much and if it doesn't make them super uncomfortable to actually initiate action so do you wait for it to all get too pressured and too uncomfortable before you actually take action because if you do then you're not alone a lot of people do this um, 
mum and dad did it, their mum and dad did it. So many people in their growing up lives did it. And the one thing that we're good at doing as human beings is passing on information, passing on conditioning, passing on, passing on our belief systems. And this is very well one that we can unpass, <laughs> not pass on, and also learn how to disassociate ourselves from and find better ways of doing it. So we're now this mass group of people who often don't take action and we don't take action again and again and again after situation after situation until, until something happens that really challenges your freedom, your safety, your happiness, your health. And then you go, right, that's it. I've had enough. I didn't do anything about it that time or that time or that time, but I'm doing something about it now, right? We have a saying here in Australia, the straw that broke the camel's back. Quite often somebody will, somebody will say, oh, but it was a straw that broke the camel's back, meaning I it was the thing that made me take action. And I actually looked it up, the meaning of this, and it describes the seemingly minor or routine action that causes a unprecedentedly large and sudden reaction. That's that sudden reaction of when somebody says, that's it, I'm not doing this anymore. So a large and sudden reaction because of the cumulative effect of small actions, meaning we had several things, lots of several things that were little, that wasn't enough pressure, wasn't a big enough breach of our boundaries or our values where we just went, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. I live in an odd hat house. I don't live in an even number house. That's not going to bother me. Doesn't matter. Until you sent the letter and it now says it's for all even numbered houses or all odd numbered houses. And then you go, oh, that's it. I'm not doing this anymore. I'm not tolerating this, right? And then you decide to take action. And that's not how we're intended to be. We're not intended to function that way. And it's a really unhealthy way of functioning. Okay. We do this and we've spoken about this. We do this because there's a general consensus growing up and all around you that says, when that happens, just go back to your happy space to just forget it. Uh, quite often somebody will say, don't upset your peace for that. It's not a big issue. I mean, just forget about it. Go back to your happy place. Who cares? And all of those, it's not a big issue experiences, eventually leads to very big issues. And that's what we're seeing a lot of now is we're seeing a lot of experiences for people where they didn't like things that happened in the past, but they didn't do anything about it because it wasn't a big issue or they didn't like the drama of it, or they didn't want to do conflict or whatever it was. And now things are happening and, and it's the straw that broke the camel's back. Now it's so uncomfortable, it's so pressured that people are being forced into action. And some of it is really heavy duty action. So as I said, it starts in earlier childhood and it grows to be this really, really unhealthy pattern. If we can pass on to our kids and uh, our kids' kids about this, then they might get to grow up to be healthy adults who deal with things as they come about. That's partly why some of these events in life happen is because it's designed to be so uncomfortable that it gets us to look at how uncomfortable we are and we get to reflect on that and go wow I've been doing this for a while I don't want to do it anymore and I'm going to change it so that's there's many blessings to come out of situations like this right when I've asked clients in the past why they did this they often said to me that it was their belief that to take action and deal with things is actually extremely stressful, that it was too hard, that it was challenging. Sometimes it's futile, which means, you know, it's not going to make any difference at all, or it's too late. It doesn't matter. I can't do anything about it. Um, and we've got to remember that these are all belief systems that it's just a belief system, right? And they've come from a very long held belief systems 
of other people's, namely your ancestors and people that you've grown up with. It's just that you adopted them as your own and you can just as easily remove them once you recognize that you have them in the first place. So if we shifted into this daily experience of really gently and lovingly, so coming of the heart, coming from this space, in the center of your chest, of the heart. So if you shifted into this daily experience of gently and lovingly dealing with things as they present themselves, and it's far less likely that things would get so bad that they would get uncomfortable and force you into big, big, big changes and decisions, right? So um, you can totally have beliefs that are the, the different ones, they're the opposite to that. And it could be um, when I take action and deal with things as they arise, I'm happier. That could be a belief of yours, which means that if something comes up, because it's a belief that you have, you have no issues at all at going, oh, that's something that I need to address. And then you go and deal with it in a very gentle, loving way. It gets dealt with, it gets resolved, it doesn't come back again, okay? Another one could be, and this is another belief that you can adopt, is when I take practical action, I feel content and I feel strong, which means it gives you peace. And through taking action, it builds your confidence and you feel strong from that. Another one could be when I do it now and not ignore what's happening to me, I am declaring that I'm worthy of great things from life. I like that one. That's good. Another one could be, I do the things that matter to me today to get the tomorrow that I want. It just means that you take action. Yeah. So the simple thing is that you can start doing today, that you can start doing today is recognizing the things that are happening around you and in your life that go against your values, your boundaries, your personal safety, all those kinds of things and make an agreement, make a declaration with yourself that you're now going to deal with things as they come up so that they can be resolved. So they stop happening and that helps you to make your boundaries very, very clear, right? People in your environment are far less likely to keep challenging those and keep dishing crap up to you, as they say, and that's going to be a wonderful thing, but that's less likely to happen, right? Far less likely. So we don't want these little issues building into gigantic things and causing you lots of stress. Let's move away from all that and move into gently and lovingly dealing with things as they came as they come up. Okay. Um, I would love to know if any of this resonates. I would love to know if you've had this experience in the past. I would love to know if you liked any of those kind of new belief systems that you could put into place or whether you came up with one yourself. If you have any comments, questions or queries about anything at all, you can find me here where the post is or on social media somewhere and um, pop that in. I'm happy to come back and have a conversation with you about it. Thanks for joining me and until next time, I'll speak to you soon. Bye.